Welcome to 13 Cubed. In this episode, we're going to talk about how to acquire memory from VMware ESXi guest virtual machines. We're going to be covering a lot of what's in this memory forensics for virtualized hosts article that you're looking at here. And by the way, I will leave a link to this in this video's description, so check it out. But really, let's start with the basics because I'm guessing that there are three different ways that are going to come to mind when you think about how to acquire memory from a virtual machine. One way would be to just run a memory acquisition tool in the VM as you would on a normal physical machine. So in other words, you could console into the machine and run magnet dump it for Windows or something like that and acquire the memory. There are a couple of other methods that involve mechanisms built into the hypervisor itself, and that would be to suspend the virtual machine or to snapshot the virtual machine. As mentioned in this article, snapshotting the machine is usually the method that I would go for so that I can preserve the state of any network connections that may be active at the time. And in fact, this article goes on to talk about how VMware includes a lazy snapshotting mechanism that hopefully prevents memory smearing and all sorts of other things. So again, I would recommend that you review this. Now, let me also say that if this is something that interests you, you should check out Investigating Windows Memory. This is an extremely in-depth and comprehensive, complete Windows Memory Forensics course that's a natural progression or follow-on to investigating Windows endpoints, which was the initial course that I'd released. So head over to training.13cube.com and check it out today if that's something that interests you. Also note that both courses include a certification attempt. Okay, so with that out of the way, let's go ahead and switch over to the second tab that I have opened here, which is VMware ESXi 8 running in my home lab environment. To get started, what I'm going to do is click on virtual machines over here on the left, and we're going to pick on this guy, Windows 10 Pro, which is the machine from which I would like to acquire the memory. Now, if I highlight this and then right click, you'll notice that there is a snapshots menu, which you can see right here. So I'll choose take snapshot right here. Pretty self-explanatory. Now, when you do this, notice that by default, snapshot the virtual machine's memory is checked. And of course we do want that to be checked. Otherwise we won't get the memory. For this, I'm just going to call it test because I can't think of a more unique name right now, but that's good enough for our purposes. So let's go ahead and click on take snapshot and this part is pretty trivial. Notice the little progress bar here in the bottom. This is happening in real time, so I'm not speeding this up or anything. But in just a few seconds, and actually right now, it has completed, and that's the first part of it. And you might think, well, that's easy. Video's over. That's pretty easy, right? Well, not exactly. Let's go ahead and head over to the data store. So I'll click on storage and then click on NVMe data store in this case, and then data store browser. And then we're going to head into the actual folder for the machine, which is right here, Windows 10 Pro. And then if I expand this out and scroll down, you are going to see that somewhere amongst these files, you're going to have a couple of different files that are specific to the snapshot that we just took. And they are right here. Notice that it's listed as snapshot 11. So this increments every single time. And keep in mind that I've cleaned up the previous snapshots that I've taken, in this case, the previous 10 snapshots but it has kept that count. So now this is number 11, the next one will be 12 and so on. Now there are two files here and most of the documentation that I review always tells you to grab the VMEM file, which is pretty intuitive because that is the memory from the machine. You can see that it is 16 gigs in this case, which makes sense because this guest virtual machine has allocated to it 16 gigs of RAM. But there's also another critical file right here called VMSN. And the thing that most of the documentation leaves out is the fact that your tools like volatility or memproc FS are not going to make any sense of this memory image without the VMSN file. In other words, they're not going to be able to understand how to read that file without the accompanying VMSN, the specific VMSN for that specific snapshot. Now, let me show you this. What I'll do is click on this first, and then I'll go over to download. And we'll just go ahead and do save as, and I'm going to put it on the desktop. So I'll just click save. And at this point it is downloading the 16 gig file. And then let's go ahead and click on the VMSN, which is much smaller. As you can see, it's about two megs in size. Let's go ahead and download that as well. And we'll go ahead and place that on the desktop too. So let me click save. And now I will go ahead and fast forward this part of the video. So you don't have to wait on the download to complete. But when it's done, let's come back and take a look at these two files and let me show you something that's going to be very important for you to understand. 
and we're back. So notice on the desktop that we have those two files that we just downloaded. So there's Windows 10 Pro Snapshot 11.vmam and Windows 10 Pro Snapshot 11.vmsn. Let's go ahead and rename this vmam file. And what I'm going to do here is just call it test.vmam to make it easier. But I'm not going to rename the vmsn file, at least not yet. Okay, check this out. Let's head over to Windows Terminal and let's run volatility three against this particular file. So I'm going to path to the desktop here and we're going to point to test.vmam. And then let's go ahead and run, how about windows.pslist? And that's it. So let's go ahead and let this do its thing. And then, well, pretty much immediately we get an issue that's displayed on screen. Notice that it says a translation layer requirement was not fulfilled. And then it says here a symbol table requirement was not fulfilled. And honestly, this is about as far as you're going to get. And do you know why? The reason why is because this VMSN file differs from the name of the VMEM file. Check this out. If we were to rename this as test.vmsn, go back to Windows Terminal, repeat the exact same command, well, it's going to work. When this is complete, we should get a process list as a result of running the windows.pslist plugin. And that's all there is to it. So the key takeaway here is that you must not only download the VMM file, but also the accompanying VMSN file. And if you rename one, you need to rename the other to match. That way, the only difference between the two should be the extension itself and nothing else. So that is a critical concept to understand. Don't just grab the VMM file, Grab the VMM file and the VMSN from the same snapshot. And if you rename one, rename the other to match so that the only difference between the two is that file extension. And honestly, I can't tell you how many times I have worked on an engagement and have gotten from a customer, for example, a VMM file by itself that doesn't have that accompanying VMSN. And obviously it's pretty much unusable to me. I mean, yes, I could run strings against it or something like that, but other than that, that's about all I could end up doing. As you can see, here is the output of that windows.ps list command. So it has clearly worked. You can see the column header here and the output just as we would expect. So I hope that's helpful to you. I realize this is a shorter 13 cubed episode, but at least as far as I've seen, not many people are talking about this. So I wanted to make something that kind of documented this and provided you with what you need to know in order to acquire memory from a VMware ESXi guest virtual machine. All right, I hope you found this information useful. And as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next 13 Cubed episode.